good morning and welcome back to my channel Ben is running hope you're doing well hope your training's going well and today's video I'm going to be talking about my ultra marathon experience the lessons I've learned a bit of a race recap um, it's now a month since I did the Stow Valley Path uh, 50 kilometer ultra marathon and I thought I'd make a little video today talking about what I've learned um, about the experience and what I'm going to take forward and finally whether I'm going to do any ultras again in the future after a pretty eventful day out, shall we say, on the 50k. It definitely didn't go to plan and um, a lot of people have enjoyed the vlog. So if you haven't watched the vlog of the, the 50k race, you can click up here, go check it out before you watch this video. Um, and some of the stuff I talk about today will make a little bit more sense. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about the race itself, a bit of a race recap. So the race is called the Stour Valley Path. Uh, 50k there's also a hundred kilometer option that starts a little bit further up the country in Newmarket the race I did starts in Sudbury and which is in Suffolk I believe and then works its way all the way th to Essex to a place called Catterwade which is very close to Manningtree um, all along the Stour Valley Path um, trail it's a trail that runs um, from Sudbury to um, Catterwade and it was yes 50 kilometers 90% of the race is on trails, um, there's a few hills, it's not a super hilly course but it's not flat, um, it's undulating I'd say. So yeah that's a little bit about the race itself. On the day uh, my race started at 1pm at the hottest point of the day, now I'm not making any excuses but obviously in an ideal situation you wouldn't start a race at 1 o'clock um, but the reason for that is the guys who do the 100 kilometer race start at 8 I think it was 8 or 7 o'clock and then they run basically through to the 50 kilometer course um, so the idea was that we all sort of finished at the same sort of time at the end which is a good idea um, made for a much better sort of spectator event if you like and yeah I think I, I actually did finish with a few of the 100 kilometer guys who were in a lot worse shape um, after finishing the race than I was but yeah it was, good to, it was a good event um, I really enjoyed the whole day um, as a whole, if anyone is watching from Stour Valley Path, the organising, any volunteers, just want to say a massive thank you. It's a really, really good day and I really enjoyed my first ultra marathon, um, despite it not going fully to plan. So yeah, the race started at 1pm, it was quite hot and humid day, I think it was around 22, maybe 23 degrees on the day. Sunny, but, but a little bit cloudy as well, so there was breaks in the sunshine, um, it wasn't full on heat. But um, yeah, it was a warm day, so we were going to be sweating a lot, we were going to be losing a lot of fluids. Um, I was running with my race pack, I had my water on, I had a water bottle on one side, I had a cup, um, and I had a couple of gels with me. I also had my little camera to film the, film the vlog, along with all the essential kit that you needed for the day. So you had to have a foil blanket, a head torch, um, there's a few other little bits and bobs that you had, a rain jacket. That you had to carry along so I had to carry a pack and yeah the first five kilometers I ran with my uh, club mate Tom. Have a good race. Yeah, um, good shout out to Tom. We, he ended up doing really well I think he came fourth on the day which is amazing just missed out in the top three but he he's um, come in the top three before so he's got one of those um, lovely uh, what are they called like medal plaque things trophies that's the one He's got a nice trophy at home from his, I think, 2019 or 2018 race. So he was an experienced guy. I thought, I'll start with Tom. He knows what he's doing. Um, and we ran the first 5K together nice and comfortably at around 4.45 per kilometre, which is about 7 minute 30 per mile, I believe. Um, and at the 5K point, we actually got passed by a guy called Ty, who ended up coming either second or third on the day. He was a very good runner, basically. Um, he came past us probably about 30 seconds a kilometre quicker, around that four minute kilometre mark, so more like a seven minute pace. Um, and I sort of looked at Tom and thought, shall I go with it or shall I not? Um, and in my head, I wanted to come in the top three, that was my aim for the day. Um, I trained a lot for this race, so I wanted to be competitive like I am with any of my other races. Um, I typically do five and 10k races, so 50k is quite a, a step up for me, but I thought I'd give it a go for the experience. But anyway, yeah, Ty came past me at 5k and I decided that that was the move to go with. So I started working with Ty, um, ticking along, passing lots and lots of the races oh, guys, and started. Oh, yeah. um, 
in the earlier ways, nice. which is a good feeling, ticking off lots of people, uh, moving your way through the field. And I believe we were actually in first and second place at probably around the halfway point. Um, obviously, there was it was a wave start, so we weren't entirely sure where we were on the day. But we were working together, having a nice chat, um, going through the first few A stations with no problems. And then it got to around the half marathon point. I think it was just past probably about 22 kilometers into the race where I started to feel my stomach wasn't sitting quite right. Um, and I was getting a little bit of cramping, um, especially in my sort of side of my abdominals, my obliques. We're only 21 and a half K into the race, so not even a halfway. So just taking a few miles a little bit easier. And I just tried to push on. I slowed the pace down a little bit, hoping that that would sort of ease the pain in the in the stomach, but um, unfortunately it didn't. And it just got worse really throughout the race. And that was a, that was the story of my race really. It, I ran perfect, I ran a perfect race up to about the halfway point, and then after that it all fell apart quite badly. And oh, my legs are absolutely bucket. Had to sort of walk jog to the to the third aid station, which was at 42 kilometres, so the marathon distance, some five miles away from the finish line. Um, I got to this aid station and I was completely finished. I was mentally drained. I, I'd had enough of the race basically and I wanted to call, call it there. Uh, but if it wasn't for the support of my family and the volunteers saying, no, you can't stop here. I can subscribe. <laughs> I can subscribe. Um, I probably wouldn't have finished the race. And in hindsight, I'm so thankful for them for pushing me to the, to the end because that was a really big sense of achievement was just finishing the race. So yeah, that's a little bit about the actual race itself. Let's talk about some of the lessons I've learned um, from this event that I'm gonna take forward into my future events, not just future ultra marathons, but my 5K, 10K races. So the first lesson that I've learned the hard way is to practice your fueling before your actual event. So what I mean by this is when you take your gels, what you eat, when you drink, how much you drink, that sort of thing. Um, and I knew that that was something that I should have practiced more in my training but I just thought naively that I'd be all right I wouldn't have any problems um, I'd just take a couple of gels when I, when I thought was the right time to take them um, I did a few long runs where I'd take a gel with me and have it at the halfway point and I didn't have any problems so I thought oh, I'll be fine on the day don't need to worry um, but yeah that was probably my biggest upset um, on the day was the fuel my fueling strategy so um, before the race even started I for some reason, something told me to have a one of these little energy gels um, before the race had even begun, probably like 10 minutes before. Um, and as soon as I took the gel, it just didn't sit right in my stomach um, for the first like 10, 20 minutes of the run. But then it went away and I thought, oh, it was fine. And didn't think much of it. And then, yeah, obviously at the halfway point, um, I think I'd had two gels by that point. My stomach had really started to, to cramp up. It wasn't happy with with the fuel I was putting into it. I was trying to drink a lot of water on the day as well, which is not something I usually would do on a on a run, if I'm totally honest. I don't really drink much water. Um, so yeah, my first sort of lesson learned would be practice your fueling strategy and don't change stuff on race day. So for example, if you wouldn't usually drink, I don't know, two litres of water in the first 10 kilometres, don't drink two litres of water, which is probably what I ended up doing. Um, yeah, don't change things that you've, that you do that you do in your training because 10 times out of 10 they're going to work perfectly on race day as well so yeah that's the first lesson I learned the second lesson I learned was racing an ultra marathon is very different from say your track 5k that I'm that I'm quite used to at the moment and um, you don't you can't really race a 50 kilometer from the gun um, which I didn't really realize if I'm totally honest sort of the race starts after about 30k I'm told um, you've just got to sort of get to that point in good in a good sort of mind state and physically and then push on the last sort of third of the race and that's when it really starts but I never really got to that point because obviously I went for it from the very start um, and paid the price um, so yeah going forward I probably wouldn't race from the start I'd, I'd focus on maybe going a little bit slower to start with and trying to build into it towards the end um, and yes yeah, to to not race, to not go with um, Ty when he came past me. I would sort of hold back, run my own race, and uh, yes, hopefully push the pace 
um, towards the end more than racing from the start, which I usually would do in say my five and 10K races. My third lesson I learned was to adjust my uh, goals on the day. Um, so it was a very hot day um, and obviously the course was on trails. So I'd done a lot of my training runs on the road. I'm used to knowing what sort of my what sort of my easy pace would be on the road, but on the trail it's very different. Um, you've got obviously hills, the the terrain is different, you can't run as smoothly on, on trails as you can on the road, so it sort of breaks up your form a little bit. Um, so you've, my, my third tip would be to adjust your pace goals for the course and the conditions on the day, something I should have done um, rather than setting out at my target goal pace, I should have t dialed it back a little bit um, because of the heat. And uh, yeah, I think I'd have been a bit more successful on the day had I done that. Fourth lesson I learned was completing the ultra in itself was was a huge achievement. Um, and in hindsight, that should have been my number one priority was just to complete the race. Um, because when I did eventually cross the line, and I got the medal. Woo! That's all the that matters. Yeah, you completed it. Bloody happy now, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was. I had a real like sense of achievement that I wouldn't usually get as much from sort of the shorter distances you had a, I had a real sort of sense of accomplishment that lasted for a few days for actually um, you know gritting through the pain and actually finishing the thing and getting the finishers medal which I've got here um, which I'm yeah my most prized medal of all of the medals I've got at the moment is this lovely medal there you go SVP 50 um, and I wouldn't have got that had I um, given up at that third aid station so I'm really glad I pushed on to the finish and that was a big lesson learned that in these long distance events just completing the race is a huge achievement so if you're somebody who hasn't done their first ultra marathon um, and is wanting to do one then completing the event should be like your A goal and anything else is sort of a bonus. And fifth thing I learned was sort of mind over matter I just got this lovely new hat from Varga from my birthday team Varga and on the inside it says mind over matter there which I really like um, and it was sort of sort of summarized the day quite well for me because um, my body had sort of given up after 30k I was I was physically broken I was having cramping I also had a bit of chest pain when I did start running again it's not always easy no matter how much you train um, so my body was saying don't don't continue but in my mind I found that extra bit, you dig a little bit deeper than you think you than you can and push yourself beyond what you believe possible. Um, so in an ultra marathon, it's definitely um, a mental game more than just physical. Um, your body may be, given up, may be given up, but your mind can, can take you to that next level, which I really um, experienced in this race. And um, yeah, something to bear in mind that when you're physically hurting, your, your body is hurting, your mind can can do amazing things. And the sixth thing I learned is uh, to strengthen my weaknesses. So I did have some gut problems. I've since been doing some abdominal work, more abdominal work in the gym. Um, and on my threshold runs, I've not had any sort of complaints. I've also been strengthening my legs, um, specifically my uh, glutes. Um, I recently had my gait an analyzed and he said my glutes were slightly weaker than the rest of my um, muscles used for running so I've been working on my squats um, just generally working on the weaknesses that I found in my um, within the race to hopefully become back a better athlete um, and be more competitive not only over the ultra marathon distance but over the 5k distance 10k distance half marathon as well um, so yeah that pretty much is it for today's video um, finally will I do an ultra marathon again 100% yes oh. how are you feling Absolutely shattered. <laughs> Never felt like this before. Um, I love the experience despite not going to plan. Um, I feel like I've got unfinished business with ultras now. I want to really nail one on the day. Um, I know I've got it in me. I did a lot of training. I think I ran 80, 90, 100 mile weeks in the training block before the Stour Valley Path 50. Um, so I know I've got that sort of long distance um, stamina in me somewhere. Didn't quite happen on the day, but I'll definitely be giving it a go. Probably next year um, now will be my next sort of ultra marathon. I'm gonna do a few um, five, 10 road races and maybe a half marathon towards the end of the year. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments how you got on with your first ultra marathon, if you've ever done one. Um, 
how did you get on, what lessons did you learn from your maybe your first ever marathon or your first long run. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments, I'll be interested to see how other people got on. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more running related content and we'll see you with another one soon. Thank you very much.